So what we're looking at here is um, you know, the initial view of the MITRE attack heat map and navigator. Um, we're specifically looking at the enterprise attack matrix. The other matrices are also available if you're interested in those. And um, those, that information, all of the associated techniques, tactics and patterns, and the supporting information for those TTPs are brought into ServiceNow through a taxi integration directly with MITRE. So what we're looking at here is David mentioned earlier is we've got our techniques, tactics, and patterns all kind of grouped together in the organizational structure that MITRE has provided to us from the matrix. We have a fantastic filter capability over here on the right-hand side that allows us to then further refine our view of, this, of the uh, TTPs here. So we can filter down to the TTPs that a specific adversary group would be potentially using against us. Applying the filter here, you can quickly see that uh, our view is gonna change and it's gonna sub-select things relevant to that specific adversary group. Removing that filter, getting us back to our original view. We also have the same filtering capabilities um, by tools, associated malware, platforms that are um, associated with these TTPs, and their data sources. Additionally, through the advanced filters, we can then start bringing more information onto the view. We can bring in our technique IDs. We can see the number of security incidents that are associated with these TTPs. We can provide some filters here as well. So uh, if we only wanted to look at critical incidents in this view, we can filter them by the priority, or we can set date ranges in here for threat hunting views of the world. We can also look at detection rules. So if we've created manual detection rules in our environment, we can start to look at the efficacy of those detection rules and their ability to help supply information associated with uh, our TTP detection capabilities. Likewise, we can also look to see where our CVEs are mapping against these TTPs. So um, if we're having, if we have vulnerability response in our environment, we can also look at um, uh, drilling down into the CVEs to see where the vulnerabilities are lying within our environment. And finally, turning on our detection coverage, we can look at that suggest, subjective rating that the organization can apply to our TTPs and then look back towards our detection rules, our security incidents, and our CVEs and really start to understand how well the organization is doing against that initial subjective review. Okay. So um, what I really like about this heat map here is that it really brings in a significant amount of information and data into a um, easy to use navigable uh, user interface that provides a lot of rich details. This is all great, but now we need to figure out how we start populating this, this view, right? Because uh, this information has to come from somewhere. The first place we'll stop on our, our journey here is what David talked about when we were looking at a coverage mappings. So in our navigation here on the right-hand side under threat intelligence, MITRE attack administration, our technique coverage mapping here, we have all of our um, techniques in a grid here, and we're able to come in and apply that subjective rating here for all of these techniques. That's probably a hard thing for your stakeholders to determine just by looking at an ID or data or a technique here. So, you know, if I was to ask a stakeholder, you know, what do you think our technique coverage is for data obfuscation, we need more information to make that determination. 
So that's when we would go back to the attack pattern as David was showing us earlier, where we can look at this pattern to determine, do we have the platforms in our environment? Is this even applicable to us? Data sources, where, where does MITRE think that we could grab information to be able to determine um, uh, this SSH uh, detection capability would be coming from? What system requirements are required? Um, when we're having the conversation with our stakeholders, we're really looking at all of these factors, including a description here, and how they would potentially detect it. So we can talk to our IT teams, um, our, our um, audit teams to see, you know, is this information even available? If it is available, do we have the tools in place to do that? We can further look into this information to understand the associated tools, malware associated with this uh, pattern, our external references. So if we need to go out and look up more information and get details so that we can make that decision. Um, from a mitigation standpoint, what courses of actions are available to us to, from a um, uh, control perspective to put in place if we don't have the detection capabilities there? An initial view of the adversary groups that are associated with this as well. And finally, our, our initial tactic. So now that we've kind of drilled into our ability to understand what these, these uh, TTPs are, how do we start assigning them to our security incidents? So as Mark was uh, telling us earlier, you know, those detection events are coming in and aggregated through seams and other threat feeds. Um, we have two real um, easy to implement capabilities to get those detections onto the incidents. So we've got a seam capability here. In this case, we're looking at the information that's coming in from Splunk and arriving in this import table directly from Splunk. We can then look at the import field and then use a regular expression to abstract that TTP attack pattern ID and then associate that directly with our incident. We also have the ability to do the same capability through our threat uh, lookup uh, threat intelligence integrations like um, Virus Total, uh, Recorded Future, Anomaly, provided that they're providing us that um, threat ID on the threat lookup results. We can also associate the uh, attack patterns and techniques directly to the observables that are attached to the security incident. Uh, so then we have a gap. So we've got some automated feeds here, but you know there are situations in our environment where we have user-created events or uh, through security incident uh, catalog where we're asking users to create their own incidents. We need the ability to also associate those TTPs through those sources of security incidents. So we have the ability to create a manual detection rule here that allows us to use information associated with the security incident, the source, the alert sensor, category and subcategory, then to manually set that attack pattern. So here, um, a really good use case is when we have user reported phishing, we want to be able to start to associate TTPs with their user reported phishing. Okay. Transitioning over to how this actually shows up on our security incident. I've got a, a user reported phishing incident here. Again, our category is phishing, our source is email, and our alert sensor is user reported phish that matches up to our manual rule that we had earlier. And we can see here that that TTP has been added through that initial access rule here. Our incident is currently in the containment. So an, an analyst has done some analysis on this and also manually associated additional TTPs to this incident. We can accomplish that by clicking the associate MITRE attack technique related link here. 
And this will bring up um, our ability to look at the um, tactics that are associated with our enterprise attack matrix and manually start adding additional TTPs here. As an example, maybe this one has malware associated with it as well. So when I save that, my screen will refresh here and add that TTP back to my MITRE attack card. So here the new malware has shown up. One last uh, great feature about our attack card is, uh, aside from just looking at it um, in the same way that we looked at it from the heat map perspective, we can drill down into a list view. And this list view brings all of the information from our attack pattern right into the user interface and allows an analyst to look at the information associated with that specific pattern, including our description, uh, methods of detection, groups associated with it, our malware and tools and mitigation activities that may be associated with it. So bringing this all back home, we can now start to see um, the things that would need to be in place to start populating our heat map. 